Hello and welcome to another video from the only source of information that you need to not only survive the current apocalypse, but actually enjoy it. And uh, today's video is going to be about hoarding. And as many of you know, I'm what's called a prepper. I don't refer to myself as a prepper. Um, I, I mostly just think of myself as a human being. I, I feel that it's important to have my groceries at my house instead of down the street at the store and so rather than store my groceries at the store I store my groceries at the house and so I guess if that's what a prepper is that's what I am but you know anytime that I uh, put like if, if I'm typing on my computer spell check will kick in if I misspell a word the word will have a red underline or something and uh, there's no way on my computer to type the word prepper or prepping without a uh, spell check kicking in. Well, at least for prepper. If you use the word prepper, spell check will tell you you got it wrong because apparently the word prepper still hasn't made its way in to the spell check dictionary. But there is a big difference between hoarding and prepping. Prepping is something you do your whole life. A hoarding's when there's an emergency and you run out and buy everything you can because you want you want to be prepared for that particular emergency. And uh, the the reason hoarding is wrong is because people who don't have food are going to blame you for for their lack of food. So, I guess even from the time I was like 18, I knew that you couldn't trust the system. You know, as a child, I I really I knew everybody in my school was uh, was violent and abusive and selfish and aggressive. And I thought, you know, I've got to get out of this town. So I joined the Navy because I'd been watching war movies all my life and it looked like a good life. But you get in the military and you're going to be in there with the same people that you were in high school with or somebody was in high school with. So all the bullies from all the high schools end up in, uh, in the military or at a job or in uh, your government or on your police force. And so at that, it was then that I realized that the world I had grown up in, the school world where violent, aggressive, selfish people were the norm. That wasn't the school world. That's, that's the normal world. That's the world we live in. And, uh, you know, as a child, I didn't have to worry about groceries because I lived with my parents and they always supplied me with everything I needed so I was content that I didn't need to stockpile food but as soon as I got out of the Navy I think one of the first things I did when after I built my house or acquired a, a house was started filling every storage space with things that were necessary you know I didn't have big screen TVs and you know, golf clubs and all that kind of stuff. But I had all the food I needed, all the bathroom essentials, toilet paper, toothpaste, things like that. All the medical supplies like Band-Aids and alcohol and aspirins. And uh, as time went on, I eventually got to the point where I felt like I had a year supply uh, for me and my wife. So two people, year supply for two people. And it's not something you should go making videos about like I'm doing here because everybody in your neighborhood is going to be watching your videos. And there is that threat that when they run out of food, they'll be knocking on your door or knocking in your door, depending on, you know, how desperate they are. And I just figured that's, that's, that's coming, whether it's now during this global pandemic thing, whatever it is. Uh, or if it's sometime in the future. Now, I, the reason I prepped is because I didn't trust the system, so I always figured something bad was going to happen. It was going to be probably worldwide, and, and it was never going to end. But uh, the way I justified what I was doing for my family and friends was that, you know, I live in a hurricane zone. I've got a year's supply of food because, you know, in a hurricane, uh, services and uh, products could be cut off and I, I also was aware that people were aggressive and selfish so I figured if I had a year's supply of food and a 
hurricane cut off supplies for a month, I could share with a bunch more people. But um, I never in my wildest dreams imagined that my prepper supplies would be used for a fictional event. You know, it's like a, a pandemic. We're going through a pandemic right now. If you go back and read about every pandemic in human history, what that means is thousands of people falling over in the street with blood coming out of every crack and nook and cranny on their body. And uh, I meant to say crack and crevice. But now we have this thing where really old people on dialysis and people on, you know, with emphysema and cancer and heart disease and diabetes are uh, nearing the end of their life and uh, they get some kind of a bug and they're so weakened that they die. That's what's happening. Well, that happens all the time. You know, right now, everybody is staring at the TV 24-7 to see statistics that are just barely changing. You know, every day, my state gets one more death and they're not telling you anything about the deaths but the few that i've been able to learn about were just really really sick really elderly people so that's that's not a pandemic that if you go back in time you know read everything you can about spanish influenza and black plagues yellow fever that kind of stuff uh those pandemics killed everybody there i mean uh i was reading about the spanish flu a while back and a whole bunch of famous people, like famous politicians and uh, famous industrialists, inventors, captains of industry, uh, religious rulers, were just falling over dead from this stuff. You know, that's not people on life support dying. These are actual healthy, functional people. And this that's not what we have. But anyway, I'm going to give you a few guidelines for stockpiling food. I, I don't have a problem... You know, I'm not one of those people that expects the system to always supply me with everything. It's, I've already explained that. So, uh, I guess a while back I went into a grocery store and a lot of stuff was gone. And, you know, I have a, gr a grocery list with maybe 10 items on it and five of those items weren't there. Well, I wasn't going to stand in line to get half my items. And, and a lot of the motivation was I knew that there were a lot of people out there that don't even have... 24 hours worth of supplies and so I got to thinking you know if I buy these five items which I really didn't need you know like I say I've got a year supply of stuff so when I go to the store I'm buying stuff because I it's things that I only have 11 months supply of and I want to get it back up to a year you know like toilet paper you can stockpile a million rolls uh, 50 years your whole life never buy toilet paper again it's not going to go bad milk you can't stockpile a year's worth of milk you can get a gallon of milk and you can stockpile a couple of years of milk powder, you know, concentrate. But <clears throat> when I go to the store, I'm not buying what I need today. I'm buying what I need at some future time, mostly. And so I just walked out. Well, my brother called the other day and he was all upset because he had gotten off of work and he went to the grocery store and he stood in line for a half an hour with his items that he needed. And he said he didn't have everything he wanted. He only had half. He, he was making some kind of recipe, and so he got half his items. And he was going to go get the other half somewhere else. He was just going to go look around. But he got mad, so he just pushed his buggy off, and he left without getting his stuff. And he went to the next grocery store thinking, I'll just get everything there. He got there, and it was the same situation. Half the, half the ingredients that he needed were gone. And uh, he wasn't going to get just get the half that was available because it wouldn't do him any good what he was just buying for his recipe so he was going off about hoarding and how terrible it was and how he hoped all those people would you know have something bad happen to them and i said well you know i've been telling you for years you really need to stockpile food because things like this happen and when they happen all the people who don't stockpile are going to take away the stuff you need so if you've got it at your house already that won't upset you but he was really upset he was you know, physically, he, you could tell. He was just really, really tore up about this. And, uh, you know, people, when they get that desperate, they'll start 
beating you up, taking your stuff, killing you for your stuff. So it's a bad thing. But, uh, you know, my hopes are that if somebody realizes how bad this is, that whether they go run out and hoard a bunch of stuff or not, that they'll change their entire mindset and start stockpiling food. You know, that, that would be a good thing. But I can tell you that what's really probably going to happen is that when this is all over with, people will go right back to having nothing. You know, and the sad thing is a lot of people, like, religiously follow the, the dates on canned food, you know, or whatever. So they've got stuff, they, they buy enough to last them a year, and they don't eat, they don't eat canned food from cans that are over a year old, so they go through their groceries, they throw away everything they bought for the pandemic. It's just wasteful, and it's, it's stupid. And if you, you go back and think about what they did, they stole food from other people, and then they just threw it away like it was nothing. That's, that's probably what's going to happen. Now, sometimes when these things happen, and I've seen it before, the people who don't have anything will demand justice of those who hoard. And so the police will actually arrest people, take all the items they hoarded, uh, put them in jail, fine them, and uh, make their lives miserable. The problem for a prepper is that you could be thrown in with that bunch. If they start going around and arresting people for hoarding food, and you're a prepper, you're going to get arrested too. And I don't know that there's anything that, you know, the, the legal system is a fiction, so no one really cares about your side of the story. But one of the things I was thinking about is that you you pay for everything with a credit card or you keep all of your receipts or you, you know like for me when i get uh like every now and then i'll i'll go and uh, take inventory and i'll replenish my s supply of the entire system and i'll write the dates so i got dates written on a lot of my foods that that you know like canned food and stuff because if they you know most most the criminal justice legal system of America, like I said, is a fiction, but there there are things that seemingly are taken, taken into consideration. And if you've got food that's a year old in your pantry and you've, it's dated, I mean, everything you buy has some kind of a date code, but a lot of those date codes are not actual dates. They're just like a code. But if you've got all these things there and they've got date codes on them and you write the date, the date that you purchase the item on the can, which I usually do, and you get arrested, you're going to have a much better chance of proving that you didn't go out and purchase all of these items on the day of the disaster that you've been carrying them around with you for years. And it may get you out of trouble. But when I talked to my brother about this stuff, he, he, I asked him, and I said, do you think that I'm wrong for stockpiling food? And he goes, no, you're responsible. Being responsible is not the same as being selfish. You know, and he understands that when I started this whole project that I was planning on sharing with my neighbors. But he also knows that after years of living with my selfish neighbors, um, uh, I've started stockpiling bullets because I'm not going to let, you know, I'm not going to spend my whole life being a responsible person just to have some selfish person come do me harm to take away uh, the things that I own. So I hope that's food for thought. And that if you're going through this and you don't have a, a regular supply of toiletries and medicines and food, and water that you'll put some kind of system in place to have those things or at the very least that you don't run out and buy everything up when people are suffering another thing that that you could do is take this information and just you know take the situation we're going through and learn from it you know i had always imagined that my food would come in handy if uh, a horde of soldiers from another nation were to invade the country and everybody went into lockdown, you know, something real. Um, I never imagined that people would be fighting over food 
because of a fiction. Oh well, I guess I should have known. If you don't want to survive, don't listen to me.